builder Kevin Snuggs and his family are leaving Britain for good and moving to France to live out their dream. They're selling their suburban semi in Banstead, Surrey and moving to a 200-year-old farmhouse set in 28 acres of idyllic lakes and woodland. It's a complete life change. Kevin, Carol and her daughters have never lived in the countryside before. They have no friends where they're moving to and they don't speak a word of the language. The new location for the family is a remote spot in Western Brittany, surrounded by dense forests and farmland. The nearest village, saint Udwell, is five miles away. It boasts a population of just 400 and two shops. Although the village is full of Breton charm, it's an hour from the coast, well off the beaten track for most tourists. It's early November and Kevin has arrived in Brittany to spend time renovating the house. The family are leaving behind their three-bedroom semi in suburban Surrey and for just £150,000 they've become the owners of a Breton farmhouse, two run-down cottages and a barn set in acres of woodland and lakes. Apart from their immediate neighbours, the nearest house is over a mile away. I've always wanted to do something a bit different, so it gets us out of the rat race, so to speak, and we can just, well, not just sit back and enjoy it, but it would be more enjoyable than going to a bloody building site and working from 8 o'clock till Christ knows what time at night, seven days a week, put it that way. The house has been empty for five years and needs modernisation before the family can move here in January. Kevin's got his work cut out. This is the uh, three-bedroom house where me, Carol and the kids are going to stay. The whole width for that is the lounge come dining room. And out the back, we've got a kitchen and a bathroom. Not very big, not very nice, but I shall make them lovely. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, stop looking at <laughs> Carol, a divorcee, and her two daughters, Holly, aged 11, and Rose, 7, have been with Kevin for three years. Kevin is um, he's very much a free spirit. I think that's obviously one of the reasons we're going to France. He's always having these mad mental ideas and inventions and doing this. And, you know, one minute we're moving to Bournemouth, then we're moving here, then we're doing this. And it's like, yeah, OK. And I just say yes half the time. This right, is okay. a rubbish hand. Country life will be full of challenges for Carol. Hold on. I'll get my nail on a out. She's a townie used to life's little luxuries, like regular beauty treatments at the leisure centre where she works. I'm going to miss Claire Lowe's when I go. <laughs> what sort of Who's going to do my eyebrows in? Who's going to wax my eyebrows? Who's going to wax my bikini line? <laughs> Which is the most important bit for you, Carol. The towns out there, I mean, they have got beauty salons and but it's trying to go in and say in French that you want your bikini line wax and stuff like that it might be a bit difficult. <laughs> That'd be a laugh. <laughs> Two weeks of working round the clock and Kevin has transformed the house. He's removed the rubbish and cleaned off the dirt to reveal an original tiled floor. The gloomy bedrooms are light and airy. The kitchen's had a facelift and the box with the bath in it has been turned into a bathroom. No, make a million, you know, don't want to retire and all that. Just it's, We're out here for... The, the kids, the lifestyle, you know, a little hobby farm, have a sheep and your goat and we're getting our dog in a couple of weeks. Always wanted a dog, so you know, I mean look you just gotta look around. I mean what what more could you want? But in order to stay here, Kevin will have to make a living. He's decided to give up building work and stock his two lakes with forty thousand pounds worth of prize mirror carp and run fishing holidays for British anglers. It's the evening before Kevin and Carol's big move. Most of the furniture's been packed up and shipped off to France. All that remains is to say goodbye to friends and family. Kevin's 
Tobin's mum and dad have been excellent. You know, they really like, I'll go for it, you know, it's brilliant. Part of me was upset, I suppose, but then it's their life. I do think it would be most difficult for Carol because obviously it's Kevin's idea to start with and she is obviously following him. She will miss her friends a lot um, and I think that might be difficult for her as well. She, it's going to take a long time to make good friends with people when you're only just learning the language. Oh, well, I can't see it failing really. Famous yeah. last words. Won't fail. None of us would do it, but you know, he's you know, that's the sort of person he is. We all admire him, don't we? We're all behind him. Only a few hours later, and it's loading up time before the drive to Portsmouth to catch the ferry to Saint Malo and the start of a new life. Oh, she's Ah, well, I thought I'd start to play my albums on. God, we ain't got much room, have we? sense the wrong time because we're going out in the winter you know there's a lot to do it's going to be rainy and miserable and we can't speak the language very well so it will be hard to begin with The house has some electric heaters, but the winter months can be harsh. Kevin's first job is to build a comforting log fire. Just want to get started now. Oh, wow, I'm excited. New adventure, isn't it? Yeah. Next morning, Kevin and Carol show the girls around their new 28-acre playground. Can we go to McDonald's? We're out in the country now. You don't have McDonald's. Is that ours? Is that what? ours? That <laughs> bit round there is ours, oh, but not up there. <laughs> The first couple of weeks they think they're on holiday and they just sort of say, wow, look at all this space. When are we going to start horse riding? When are we doing this and when are we doing that? When we first came here, I was looked and I was like, oh, my jaw went down. I've got to look here and it's, it's brilliant. It's wonderful, isn't it? Carol's decided not to look for a job. She wants to put all her energies into helping Kevin with the business. The plan is to attract up to eight anglers a week during the fishing season. If they get it right, Kevin and Carol could pull in around £40,000, enough to cover costs and to support the family. But there's just three months to clear the overgrown paths, prepare the carp and turn the barn into a shower block for the anglers, so they can start taking bookings for the year ahead. We are against the clock, because it's middle of January now, we've got no bookings and we want to try and open April, you know, and we've got a get some money in to survive for next year. And then we just walk normally. Get on it. 
To help the girls settle into their new life, Kevin and Carol are keen for them to start at the local Catholic primary school as soon as possible. First day at school, so um, obviously a bit nervous. Well, we all are for them as well. I've got an English to French, French to English dictionary. I mean, Rose is at the right age because they're not even reading and writing at the moment at Rose's age. Oh, I don't have to do anything. No, that's right. Well, what don't you like about it? Because it's a French school. But you're living in France now. Yeah, but I don't know any French. Well, that's why you're going to school, isn't it? Yes. The school system is different in France, and the girls will have a longer day. They'll be in class from 9 till 5. And although they get Wednesdays off, they have to go in on Saturday mornings. Holly and Rose speak barely a word of French and know nobody at their new school. But at least they don't have to wear a uniform. Yeah, Rose didn't cry. No, that's all right. Rose just shut up for once, believe it or not. So yeah, she was... got a desk, got a coat in, didn't she? She was away. So I think they're going to be okay. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Kevin's making a start on the overgrown areas around the lakes. He plans to make 10 swims, prime spots for fishing. There'll be space for a tent by each swim so the anglers can sleep next to their rods and fish day and night. It's about getting your personal best and the fight and getting them in and, you know, talking to the other anglers, how they're doing, I mean, what they've caught, what they were using, what method they were using. You know, it, it's all part of fishing. Brittany is popular for carp fishing and has attracted British anglers for years. But Kevin believes his lakes have the potential to beat the competition. There's other fisheries obviously in France, we're not the only one. But the difference we hope between us and the other is the personal touch. We're going to do a service where, which I don't know if any other fisheries do, but in the mornings I'll come round if you order it the night before, you want a bacon or egg or whatever, sandwich roll, whatever, then I'll bring it round to you in the morning. We just want to make it so people recommend it to everyone else and just word of mouth. One of the immediate benefits of the family's new life together is that for the first time Kevin is at home when the girls get back from school. So what do you do at break time then? Well, my first word to make conversation was il fait froid, oui? <laughs> Did you make new friends? Most new boys, but yeah, typical. two girls. So how many did you make friends with then? Five? Seven. Seven? Two girls and... Five boys. Yeah. They don't join up their peas. Oh, OK. Um, they have these funny things at the end. Is that an R? I don't know what that is, to be honest. So what's now, that mean, the travail? Travel. Oh, lucky I can speak yeah. French, innit? Yeah. Just translated all that. Right, well, we'll do that later then. Well, have... After just a couple of weeks, the family is beginning to settle in. Ahead lies their first spring in the countryside. The challenge of getting the lakes ready for business and an even more formidable battle with French bureaucracy. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. But it's... It's a problem because uh, he's the president of the federation. It's six weeks since Kevin, Carol and the girls swapped suburban Surrey for life in rural Brittany. The worst rainfall for years is stopping Kevin from getting the lake ready for the arrival of his carp. His plan to be open for business by Easter is in danger. In rural France, the rain also brings problems you don't have to think about in Banstead. It's dirty work, but as a builder, Kevin's pride won't let him call out the plumber. We've been fun and games, been out digging, trying to find a septic tank, and we eventually found it, but it's full up at the moment. 
so we can't actually um, use the toilet facilities. <laughs> we're having to wee in the BJ and we're having to go for a poo in a bucket. You need smell a vision to really appreciate this stink. Kevin <laughs> is absolutely covered in crap. He spends four hours immersed in the septic tank and another two fixing the toilet. This bloody toilet's cursed. <sighs> Sewage problems aside, life's not shaping up too badly. The girls have settled well into their new school and are making progress with the language. <laughs> Very good. Kevin and Carol's French is, however, less impressive, and trips to the supermarket are still a struggle. Try it. What is that? That's ginger. Try it. Oh, it's, it's not, not a Chevelle, is it? I walk around constantly in my little dictionary, and I'm like, get out, what's that, what's that? Turkey. Oh, I don't know. Do you want some turkey? You've got pears and stuff, haven't you? In supermarkets. There's no convenience food over in France. Before in England, you could go and get your chicken dippers for the kids and fish fingers and bits and bobs like that. There's no food like that. It's a lot more fresh meat, fresh vegetables, and loads of like homemade stuff. Food is actually a lot more tastier. It's a lot fresher. I think we all eat a lot healthier now. In England, uh, the kids would come home from school and they'd do their homework, watch a bit of telly, and then it'd be dinner time and the kids would uh, always eat on their own. And then I would eat later with Kevin. But now we all sit down together and we all have our dinner together, which is good and which is I like. It's like no television on and we sit down and have a chat. We got... We've done something with our dictionary. Oh, you did? All four of us do like uh, dinner time, family time. At last, with the arrival of spring, the rain clears and Kevin can get back to work. If you're planning to put £40,000 worth of carp into a lake, it's a good idea to make sure there's no predatory fish around that may eat them. The plan is to drain the lake. Kevin's found a couple of locals, Laurent and Tino, who know these waters, to show him how it's done. <laughs> While Laurent opens the sluice gate, Tino waits by the outflow with a net to catch any fish. The water runs off into a nearby stream. Kevin's used to working a 10 hour day without a proper break and is keen to press on. But this is France. It's 12 o'clock, and things are a little different. They're a really nice couple of guys have a laugh with them. I mean, my French ain't excellent or nothing, but you still, they speak a bit of English and I've picked up a little bit of French, so we communicate and you have a giggle and a laugh and all that. But um, they do like to talk and have a fag and then talk and have a fag. Then, you know, when they get on with work, they get on with work, but everywhere, 12 till 2, boom, shut, lunch, bottle of wine. I'm getting used to it, but at first I don't, two hours is a bloody long time to stop working. Local springs feed the lakes. Before they start to refill, the men have to wade in and wrestle with the fish. 
Lauren and Tinon, uh, I've got a big net down here and Kevin's gone up the channel. <laughs> He's trying to scare the fish. So they all swim down into the channel where they've got the big net so they can catch them. That's the idea of it's going to work, I don't know. Local folklore has it that the lake contains a giant catfish. If it's true, Kevin needs to track it down or he could lose the carp he puts in the lake. The catfish weighs 46 kilos. Laurent's taking it away to sell. It should net Kevin a couple of hundred pounds. The lake has also produced hundreds of smaller fish. Ooh, voilà. Come on, come on. But the day's best catch are some good-sized carp, Kevin's first valuable stock. Fish this big are worth 500 pounds apiece. Kevin was very pleased. He's like trying to get out of the fish as quickly as possible. Get out, weigh it so we can put them back in. So he didn't get too stressed. In the small, close-knit community, sharing the day's catch of pike is a good way of getting on the right side of the neighbours. The family is getting used to spending more time outdoors. They're clearing the land behind the house to make room for some farm animals. It's all part of Kevin and Carol's plan to become as self-sufficient as they can. You know, if my friends saw me, they'd just laugh, they really would. But they'd be surprised at how I have changed. It's just like every day you get up, I've got my dirty old jeans on and the old jumpers and just get your wellies on and, you know, get out and sort of give Kevin a hand doing everything. And uh, it's, it's good, it's good fun, we're both enjoying it. I was knackered last week and I was just working with Kevin solid and I was just exhausted. My feet were killing me, my back was killing me. He's like, come on you wimp, come on you wimp. And I think, I can't stop, I can't stop because he's going to really have a go at me. So I just get going and plodding on and plodding on. <laughs> I haven't broken any of my nails, touch wood. I miss having my eyebrows done. They are bad in there, they need doing my eyebrows. I mean, I have found a little beauty place though, so I'm going to pop in and get a price list. Don't tell Kevin. <laughs> Holly and Rosie have swapped hours in front of the TV for a storybook life of woodland adventures and lakeside rambles. And they've taken up horse riding. It's just the amount of time that we can devote to the kids now, whereas before, not that we couldn't, you just not in a position to. I mean, like three or four years ago, I, I don't know, I may not have been suited to to having this lifestyle, but now at the age I am and what I want for the children, this is, this is just perfect. The girls have now spent 12 weeks at the local primary school. To help her overcome the language difficulties, 11-year-old Holly is in a class a year below her age. I do most of my homework now and I understand most of what my friends say to me. I can ask for what I want at the canteen as well. Um, I can go into a shop and ask like, what, I, what I want and stuff like that. So I think I've, I'm not that good, but I'm quite good. Alors Vincent, explique-moi comment est-ce qu'on fait pour multiplier par 11. You sort of walk in and it's sort of like, ugh culture shock. It's, you know, Holly's used to going off to school, carrying her laptop and, you know, they've got all mod cons and everything and the schools here, they're very basic. But um, at the end of the day, they do get the sort of results for the kids and they all do well. But in the long run, when they are fluent in French and they've got that behind them, I mean, it's going to be no stopping them. That's 
come. She's got a boyfriend now. And so have I. I've got a misfit. I fancy two Clemons and a Pierre. Mm. Yesterday, Clemon said he fancied me, but he, he had to ask the teacher how to say it in English. It was like, he asked the teacher, it was so embarrassing. So Nanya said he loved me, because he can speak Chinese, French and English. I know he fancied me, because when we went to his house, he kissed me. Did mm. he? Uh, uh, 11 and 7. In just a few months, Kevin and Carol have also been accepted by the local community. Neighbour Gerard and his family often pop round for a progress update. You've got to get in, in with the French, basically. We don't want just, you know, have English friends all over. The idea was to mix with the French as well. Who is for tea? Carol's still shy about speaking French, but Kevin's determined to give it a go. Oui, mais maintenant, uh, encore, uh, la... Au bout, derrière, au fond, au fond, au fond, au fond, oui. C'est front, non? Oui, derrière, c'est le front, c'est le back. Derrière, c'est pas le front. Non, au fond, c'est le front, non? Non, ça c'est... Though Kevin's vocab sometimes lets him down, he's quickly mastered the body language. Oh, you greet them and two kisses and shake the guy's hand, kiss, 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 kiss. And then when you leave, it's kiss, 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 kiss. They've got three daughters. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's quite nice, actually. By now, the fishing business should have been up and running but there's a problem with the license to trade. Kevin's found out that the local council owns the fishing rights to his lakes and wants to charge each of his anglers 40 pounds for a permit to fish. He's applying for private status to avoid the extra costs, which he fears could make his holidays uncompetitive. Oh, it's cool, right? oh, it's cool, this side, it's cool, that. Mm. We're English, that's not helping. If we were French, I don't know if you'd have half the trouble. The problem is you have to deal with so many different departments and basically Department A doesn't know what Department B is doing. They, they just don't seem to know the laws themselves, really. Because every region in France is different, I probably think this region is one of the most difficult to open fishery, probably. So, which we found we didn't know beforehand, of course. When, when, when it's OK, it's OK. Uh, okay. Donc, uh, Tino and Laurent are helping Kevin to unravel the bureaucratic nuances. If you the president of the Federation of the Morbihan, oh, yeah. the department, okay, it's in 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 ne, ne veut pas, il ne veut pas des temps privés. Il est contre la privatisation des des étangs des rivières, okay? Ah oh, oh, no 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 no. Just France. Eh? Left hand down at what the right hand's doing. No. In France, it's a pfft. Fouillerie. This is what you do in France. You get used to waiting. You can't rush anything in France. When you try to open the business, it's very frustrating. With their business plans on hold, Kevin and Carol are getting worried about money. The delay means there are some tough decisions ahead to keep their dream of a new life in Brittany alive. Slowly, slowly. All you're here is slowly. But we've got to pull our belts in and sort of sit down and work it out. Now we're out here, I'd do anything to keep... I'm not giving this up, not for anything. You know, I know Kevin feels the same and we'll do whatever we have to to keep it because we love it and it's our home. <laughs> It's a long, hot summer in Western Brittany. Kevin, Carol, Holly and Rosie are discovering the pleasures of life outdoors around their 28 acres of lakes and woodland. 
We could obviously never, ever afford anything like this in England. We are extremely lucky, but then you make your own luck to a certain degree. Every day I drive past those lakes, I just look at it and I think, oh my God, there are ours, and I don't think I would ever get bored of looking at that view. I just love it so much. Before, the kids would come home from school, do their homework, and they'd sit there down and have their dinner, whereas now, we, nine times out of ten, always have dinner together. We play a lot more ball games, cards, spend a lot more time together than what we did in England, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> you know, I go and pick the kids up from school, take them to school, never do that in England. I was working, working seven days a week. I always knew I'd do something, I just was waiting for the opportunity to think like this is the one sort of thing. But it's now three months after they had planned to open and there are still no anglers on the lake because Kevin is waiting for the licence that will allow him to operate as a business. When you're trying to set a business up, they don't seem to want to help you that much. And, you know, this was our dream and, you know, you've got to work at it. No fishing. Fishing forbidden. Fishing forbidden, yeah. Unless you pay me. While he waits for his licence, Kevin is converting the old barn into shower facilities for his future guests. But the delay is becoming a real problem. Living in France isn't as cheap as they'd hoped, and neither he nor Carol is earning. Without bills and all that, we were spending like over a thousand pounds, well over a thousand pounds, well, no, about a thousand pounds a month on food and petrol. And I'm thinking, that's 250 quid a week. What the bloody hell are we buying? And then I start thinking, well, where's it all gone? And then if you start adding up, taking their horse ride in once a week and all the other little nooks and crannies and nods and sods, I mean, it does mount up, but I think, well, I said it, you've got cut back. It's time for some sacrifices in order to keep going. Kevin is faced with selling the MG back in England that he's cherished for 12 years. I must get at least minimum five, six grand. I'd like to keep it forever, but... Yeah, how many times a year do you go out in it? Four times. Four? I think you're doubling it. Maybe twice. Why? Well, it's always because I'm working. So it is, it's lovely, but it's not practical. So I've been told, you know, I've got to get rid of it. Who's told you? You did. So, no, I'm going to sell it because we want the money, basically. Yeah. Well, we need the money, don't want the money. We've got to get rid of it. An alternative is for Kevin to go back to England to earn some cash doing building work. Well, I don't want to go back on the building game, but if I have to, I have to. You know, I'm not giving up just... You know, you come across an obstacle, you just have to find a way around it. Simple as that. Well, I said to Carol, you know, what about me going back and working for three weeks because I can earn decent money and coming back? And I think the answer is no. I mean, that is an absolute last resort. I just don't want him to go back to England. I want him to stay here with us. But if he has to, he has to. In the end, Kevin had no option and sold the MG. Although it didn't fetch the price he'd anticipated, the sale has given them enough cash to press on with the next phase of their plans, introducing some farm animals to the property. It's always been a dream of mine to have the animals. You know, we're going to get a pig and ducks and geese and organic chickens. Oh, my God, look! The day old chicks will be kept in the barn under a light until they're old enough to venture outside. Eventually, they'll provide a daily supply of eggs. Some will be for the pot and others for bartering with the neighbours. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Rose, I don't want it. Put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Never mind. <laughs> be careful. They never had a chicken before in their life. One day old and we lost two. So I'm quite happy with that, you know, 48 chickens. Making a little noise, so lovely. Kevin's also fenced off the field in front of the house 
and bought four sheep. If you're going to have animals, you might have loads of animals because you've got to look after them anyway. <laughs> Don't let go, Kev. These are purely for breeding, so just their offspring will end up on the dinner table. I came and said, oh, we can get some sheep. I'm like, yeah, OK. And, you know, I used to look out over the field and think, oh, sheep. And then you see the fencing going up and the sheep have gone in there. Now we've got our sheep, it's lovely. I love my sheep. I love my sheep. <laughs> That's so sad. We've got three little girls and a boy. We've got Cliffy, Barbie, Cheeky Chops and Hermione, and they're all safe. They're not for the shop. <laughs> Their babies will be. <laughs> we haven't killed any yet, so I don't know how King Carol will be at that stage when she has to come to help pluck and gut. I don't know if she'll gut, but pluck, maybe. The chickens, and I don't actually have anything to do with the lamb, but you know, I'll do that. Even though the money is short and French bureaucracy is interminable, the weather is glorious. There are chickens in the coop, sheep in the field, and the social lights looking up too. <laughs> the social life is completely different. In England, you're in your group of friends that you've known for a long time, that are in your age group. Whereas in France, if you meet someone and you get on with them, they become your friends. The social scene is not going to pubs or clubs or even restaurants really. You would go around someone's house for a barbecue or for a meal and then they come around to your house and that's how it is. You don't sort of go and meet in the pub for drinks or anything. Nice. Oh, I knew he was going to do that, no. The French eat better than the English. It's good, it's good. 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 It's are followed by another local speciality, Le Rock. It's eight months since the family moved to France and everybody's feeling at home. The latest addition to the family, £40,000 worth of carp, will soon be arriving and earning their keep. Their dream of running a fishing business is almost within their grasp. saint Tudouel, Kevin and Carol's nearest village, is five miles away. It's not on the tourist map and the fishermen could be just what this sleepy village needs. Kevin has recently been told that he can't privatise the lakes, so they'll have to increase their holiday prices to cover the fishing permits. Now, five months after they should have opened, the mayor is about to tell them if they've been granted their licence to trade. Well, he's got more clout than me. A, he's French, obviously, than the English. You know. B, he's the mayor. And he is the mayor, and he's apparently got quite, he's quite a well-known man, not just in this area, but in the surrounding areas as well. And he can obviously talk to the officials. After nine months of living in Brittany, Kevin and Carol feel confident enough to try and handle a meeting in French on their own. Bonjour, Kevin. Bonjour, Guy. Ça va? Comment vas-tu? 
Ça va Bien Oui, bien, merci. Bonjour. <rire> voilà. Bonjour. Bonjour. Asseyez-vous. Merci. Alors, j'ai téléphoné ce matin ouais. et vous allez recevoir euh, l'arrêté. L'arrêté ah, du ouais. préfet ouais. qui va vous permettre euh, d'exercer dès cette année. Alors, l'arrêté, c'est un, un papier, une autorisation. Ouais. Ah, oui. okay. Pour, la... pour, euh, autre, pour euh, travailler, ouais, travailler. travailler dès cette année. Ah, ok. Je ne sais pas si pour l'instant on peut dire euh, que vous puissiez gagner votre vie, que vous puissiez correctement et normalement élever vos enfants, ouais. et que vous soyez demain une activité de notre terroir, comme on dit ici, ouais. hein, de notre terroir de saint udual pour que, eh bien, on parle de saint udual à travers la carpe, et la pêche à la carpe, ouais. Ouais, ce serait ouais. bien. Ah, voilà. Merci beaucoup. Oui, merci. Au revoir. Merci Kevin et puis à, à, à bientôt. À bientôt. Hein? bientôt. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. The new business will be called Clearwater Lakes. At last, we've got our arete. To trade. To trade, so that's done. So Clearwater sort Lakes is going ahead. So now we've just got to sort everything else out. So it's, um, but you know, steadily, gradually, tortoise in the hair and all that business. So it's, um, So yeah. and steady, as Holly always says, wins the race. Yeah. The lake can now be stocked with the first batch of Kevin's £40,000 investment, 140 large mirror carp. Number one. Despite the heavy rain, even the mayor has turned out to witness the releasing of the fish into the lake. The carp have been transported in a tanker from a fishery four hours away. Well, I'll get this one in quickly. Before finally releasing them, Kevin's checking their weight to make sure he's got what he ordered. The first group of anglers from England have arrived for the weekend. They'll be camping next to the lake and giving Kevin their verdicts on the quality of the fishing. When he fully opens next year, Kevin will charge £30 a day per angler. This will include the fishing license, camping facilities, use of the new shower block and room service in the shape of a bacon butty brought direct to your tent flap every morning. Kevin's target is to attract up to eight anglers a week throughout the nine-month season to meet his running costs and support the new life in France. The anglers set electronic rod alarms so that they can fish while they're sleeping. That's it. We're all set. Bait one are on. That's it. Let's wait for our big one. A few hours later, the first fish is pulled from the water. A 28-pound common carp. Kevin's there to record the moment of glory. Hey, look at that for a beauty, Bring it down, mate. Bring it down. Bring it down a touch of your face. That's it. 
Virgin fish of the water. First yeah. one. I feel like honoured in a way. I do. <laughs> and it's brilliant. I do. I think it's fantastic. Next morning, it's egg and bacon baguettes all round. Mm. Yeah, I know. I mean, we're in France and all that, and have croissants, but there's nothing like a, something cooked in the morning. A bloody croissant. I'm going to see you through the day, is it? You want something in your stomach, not a bloody bit of air and bread, you know, a bit of jam on it. And you go abroad, you always have a full English breakfast, don't you, when you can? There you go, then, Kim. Off you go, darling. Hey, are mate. Thank you very much. I'm going to get it to the office. Do you want it in there? Wait, cheers. Oh, Who's got a kettle and everything then? Uh, Bob's got the kettle. I've got a stove here. This place is um, stunning. Um, as soon as you walk in here, it's just fantastic. Plenty of wildlife. Views are just brilliant. Um, and you're away from the traffic. It's just peaceful. It's magic. Absolutely magic. I mean, he couldn't have chosen a more ideal place than this. There's a few of us that go fishing every year, um, and, well, definitely next year we'll be coming here. No question about it. It's lovely seeing the tents out, isn't it? It's going to be like next year. Maybe eight of them. Yeah, it's nice to see the, the divvies up and everything, you know. Right, everything's coming together now. Ten months ago, Kevin, Carol and the girls were living a suburban life in Surrey. Kevin was stressed out by working long hours six days a week as a self-employed builder. The move to Brittany was a huge financial and emotional gamble. But a thumbs up from their first fisherman is just what Kevin and Carol were waiting for. The gamble, it seems, has paid off. When Kevin first sort of came back and said we're moving to France, so I went, yeah, OK, you know, all right, Kev. And um, sort of two weeks later, we came out here. We got out of the car and um, we walked over and my jaw literally just dropped. And I just looked at Kevin and I said, I've got to live here. I hadn't seen any of the houses or anything. I just saw the lake. I just fell in love with it. And I just wanted to live out here more than anything. We did have a nice house in Bates, we was quite happy there, we had big plans for that, but this just turned it all on its head. When we brought the girls over for the first time, I think it was the most memorable part, and draining the lake and the catfish, that was tremendous. Absolutely, best move we ever done, without doubt. No regrets at all. So yeah, it's been, and hopefully the future will be even better. We all just love the, the country lifestyle that we have now, as opposed to before, just work and traffic and constantly rushing around everywhere. It's so laid back. All four of us are just so happy out here. It's just everything that I hoped it would be and more.